Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to do a brief introduction to MATLAB slash Octave. We're going to focus on Octave here, but uh, same process works with MATLAB. Uh, what is Octave? Well, it's an open source version of MATLAB in, in as simple terms as possible. Uh, it's free and it can be run directly from any browser by going to octave-online.net. Uh, so it's not definitely not as powerful as MATLAB, definitely not as versatile in a lot of ways, but in a lot of ways it suffices. If you're going to do research with MATLAB, you, you probably want MATLAB. Um, for educational purposes, this is perfectly great. So the first steps, in order to really get set up in the correct environment, this is the most important part. If you do this right off the bat, it's going to make working in Octave a whole lot easier and um, much more manageable. So first of all, uh, before you do anything, log into your student email account or any Gmail account. Uh, you can use other email accounts. I just don't know how well those work and how smooth the process is. Uh, your student email will work fine. Gmail account, um, so if you stick with Google email accounts, you're better off. Uh, go to octave-online.net. Once you're there, from menu, and we'll do this in just a moment, choose sign in with Google. That will log you in, and now you will have a workspace that uh, you can save and edit files in. Uh, it's basically now in the cloud. So anytime you go back to octave-online.net and sign, sign in with that same email account, you will be able to access any files that you saved. I also recommend always downloading your files. That way, if something does happen or you forget to save something in the cloud, then you still have a backup copy of it. But it will say that I hadn't had any problems. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, and, and while we're in there, we're going to just show some of the basic commands. This is probably the most intuitive thing, uh, is how to do addition, subtraction, all that other stuff. Now, I will say that you can go to Google and you can type in MATLAB uh, Pi symbol, or you can type in MATLAB how to blank, and you will get tons of results. You can do the same thing with Octave, but uh, because the MATLAB and Octave commands are so, so similar and almost identical, you might as well just Google MATLAB because there's a lot more information on MATLAB than there is on Octave. So uh, you'll be able to find plenty of answers. I just, just a quick Google search, search will reveal pretty much anything you want to do. So we're going to hop over to the web browser. Here we are in the web browser. Uh, I've got my URL pointed at octaveonline.net. I type enter. Takes me here. Takes a second to load. Gives me some uh, boxes just so you know what's going on here. This is the command prompt. So in here, I could actually start executing code. And then it tells me if I want to uh, use scripts, I've got to sign in. And then over here, this is just the variable workspace. This just shows you any variables that have been created. And you'll always see this ANS one. Don't worry about what that means. It's, it's a variable that stores the last uh, output. In this case, if you click on it, it'll show you what it's equal to it right now. Uh, there's no value. There's no most recent output. In fact, if you type in ANS, it's going to display some interesting stuff. Dismiss that. So I'm already signed into my email account. So I will go to menu and I will click sign in with Google and it's going to ask me which email account I want. So now I am logged in and you can see I, I now have two additional windows. I have basically the script window, the script editor, and I have the files editor. So these are all files that I've created in the past or have worked with in the past. And um, so I now have access to them, right? So I'm on any computer, I can do this. So some of the basic commands, before we get into scripts, you can kind of adjust these windows. It is kind of clunky, uh, but you know, it, it's, it, it's free, so you can't complain. So in here, I can actually start typing in uh, commands like if I want to do four plus four, okay? That gives me an ANS. So now you see that ANS is a variable in the workspace and that stores the most recent output. You can do things like four minus four or four plus four minus four. Um, I can actually create spaces between these. It shouldn't really matter. It, any white space will be omitted in that computation. So it's not space sensitive. Um, and I can do things like four squared. I can do things like uh, maybe I want to take uh, two pi. Okay. So how would I get the pi symbol in here? Well, pi is spelled pi. So if I just want to see pi, now you can see if I typed in pid, the text turns blue. If it's orange or this kind of yellowish orange, that means it recognizes it as, as something stored within MATLAB. And then it outputs the first few digits of pi. If I do two pi, you notice that it doesn't like that. It, it has a parse error. And the reason this occurs is because I didn't put a multiplication sign in there. So in MATLAB and Octave, you explicitly have to put a multiplication sign in there. In fact, you might say, what about two parentheses pi? Well, it does not see parentheses as um, explicit multiplication. So you, if you want to use multiplication, you could. You'd have to do, or parentheses you could, but you'd have to do two times parentheses pi. Or if I want to do pi plus one minus 17, 
and then multiply that quantity by two, I can do it that way as well. Uh, if I want to do e, like e to the third, uh, that pretty much works. Um, if you do e, it'll print out 2.7183, which is an approximation of Euler's e. So those are some of the basic operations you can use in there. And again, if there's anything that you, you're not sure is not working, you can go do a quick Google search and find out a lot about it. Another thing we often want to do is print text. Um, there are lots of different functions. Uh, we'll just stick with uh, the fprintf function. So notice this has sort of function notation, right? Uh, so when we think of function notation, we think of, I would think of f of x. So in this case, the function name is fprintf. The parentheses indicate what your what parameter you're feeding that function. And in this case, the only parameter is the welcome to math 277. Notice I have single quotes around it. All right, uh, we're gonna notice in a second that's, that's gonna be a messy command. Um, and we'll see why, because the, it, this forces the text to appear on the same line as the command line. If we put a slash n after the last uh, thing I want to print, but before the close parentheses sign, then I uh, will be able to print on, uh, basically create a line break. All right, now you can also use double quotes. Double quotes work as well. Single quotes are just uh, what I've been used to. So let's go ahead and execute this in uh, Octave. So slash n tells Octave to break to the next line. So here I am back in Octave. And I can come in here and type in f print f. I'll make the screen a little bit bigger. So I can type in f print f and then give it the single quote. And I can type welcome to MAT277. Uh, you got to close that quote. Notice that it changed colors when I closed that quote. I was trying to interpret all the stuff after the first single quote as a bunch of symbols, but now if I close it, it will understand that. Now notice what happens if I if I do something like five plus five next. It prints on the same line, right? So basically, having slash n after that exclamation mark will prompt Octave to print the command, the next command line, one line below it. So check this out. Now, if you press the up arrow, you can actually toggle through everything you've inserted. You don't have to retype things 100 times. Type in slash n right there. Then, okay, same thing happens. But now if I do something like 5 plus 5, you'll see that, first of all, it'll create a line break. And it'll output, it'll show my input 5 plus 5 on the next line and my output 4, 5 plus 5 on the line below that. Now, let's see what happens if I accidentally put this in the wrong place. What if I put it out here? Let's see what happens. Well, it doesn't recognize that. It only recognizes slash n as part of the string. Okay, this is called a string, by the way. Welcome to Math 277. It's a string. It's a series of characters. If I put it, say, here, then notice what happens. It shows welcome to ma, and then we said give it a line break, p277, exclamation mark. And now you'll notice, once again, if I do something like 5 plus 5, it's, I didn't create a line break after the Math 277, so it's going to create kind of this messy little edit. All right, so that's how you use fprintf. Let's jump to something else. By the way, you can type in at any point, if you type in CLC, that will clear the screen. Uh, and that just kind of gives you a, a fresh screen to work with. So I typed in CLC, all that did is just cleared out the screen. It didn't actually remove any of the variables, it just cleared the screen. All right, let's take a look at creating variables. So first of all, we want to create variables oftentimes because we want to store quantities in to some placeholder value. So variables must begin with a letter and be alphanumeric. So for example, uh, 359 cannot be a variable. Uh, A359 can be a variable because it begins with a letter. The other thing we should point out is that it's, Octave is very case sensitive. So if you type in lowercase x, but then later you type in capital X and you're wondering, well, how come I can see that x is right there? Why isn't it showing me, why is it saying it's not a recognized value? It's because little x and big x are two different variables, and you can have two different values being stored in each of these two quantities. It can be pretty much any reasonable length. I think there's a limit to how long your variable name can be, but it's not usually an issue. It can contain no spaces or special characters other than an underscore if you're separating multiple words in a variable name. So let's say you want to call a variable name uh, your speed, and you want uh, to a space between the word your and speed, you can put an underscore between your and speed, and it will still treat that as a single variable. All right, so let's go ahead and execute this in octave. All right, so here we are back in octave. And so 
now we want to create a variable. So I'm going to make this little screen bigger here so I can see my variables as I populate. So let's say I create a variable called x equals 5. You notice right away that there's a, if I hover over that, it says that x is a scalar. And um, now if I go back and find x, if I type in x, it will print the value of x. If I do something like x plus 2, as expected, it will take the value of x and add 2 to it. However, notice that if I type in x, it's still equal to 5. I didn't change the value of x. I just wanted to see what the result of taking the current value of x and adding 2 to it would be. If I want to change x to become the quantity x plus 2, and I can say x, let x equal x plus 2. Now, that might seem mathematically deceptive, right? Because how can x be itself plus 2? But this is what we call it an assignment. So we're assigning to the value of x, the current value of x plus 2. And now it'll tell me x equals 7. And if I go in and try to have octave return x to me, it will now show me the current value. I can also create strings. So I can create like, uh, you know, y can be the string hello. And now notice I'm using double quotes. Um, now it shows ABC next to it. And if I type over, it'll, it'll call it characters. So I can now display Y, right? And it will show me that Y is equal to hello. If I try to add X plus Y, it's going to do something really interesting. Uh, it actually creates H-E-L-L-O. It actually has taken the ASCII, I think I want to say ASCII value of H. It's a numerical value and adds to each of these uh, corresponding numerical values that represent these letters, it adds the value of, uh, sorry, it adds, adds the value of x to it. So if we looked at, um, well, I'm not going to worry too much about this, but just be careful that you're not cross-typing strings and, um, and numerical values. All right, so that's how you can create variables. Again, you can also, I guess I should point out in here that you can create, uh, you can, you can create um, things like your speed, right? So I put in an underscore between there and I can call it, you know, your speed is 65. And notice that it, if I, it looks just like X, it has the pound next to it, so it's a scalar. So if I go back and type in your speed, and let's say I want to add X to it. Remember, X's last value was seven. It's gonna create 72. So it adds those two variables together. Now, if I create a variable called four or X, and I want to assign a value of three to it, Octave's going to yell at me. It's going to say, what are you talking about? This is a syntax error. It doesn't understand that 4x is the name of a variable, but I can create x4 equals three. And now notice that x4 is a new variable. And if I go access x4, in fact, now I can add x4 plus x plus your speed. You know what? This looks too compressed to me, so I'm just going to put a space in between there. And it should add uh, perfect, three plus, 65 plus, uh, plus 7 is going to give me 75. So that's a basic introduction to how we uh, manipulate some quantities in here. Obviously, one of the things that we are going to run into is we have a ton of code up here. And if we ever need to backtrack and, and fix a problem, we're going to have a heck of a time doing it um, because we're going to have to kind of backtrack. We're going to have to retype all of this uh, set of code in. So rather than doing this, uh, I'm going to create a separate video where I'll show you how to actually create a script. And in that script, you just like a actors or actresses script, you keep track of all the commands you've typed in so that it's easily reproducible if you need to go back and change something or you, you want to give somebody your code for them to be able to run or alter. So we'll do that in the next video.